we're over a month throughout this NBA season, and sometimes when you think of a team's best player, it's fairly obvious. But so far this year, there's been a lot of teams' best player that is definitely a surprise and wasn't as expected. So for today's video, we're going to go through every single NBA team, and we're going to talk about their best player so far this season. And we'll start off in Southern California. We'll talk about the LA Lakers. And although LeBron has been exceeding expectations once again as a 39-year-old, Anthony Davis has been their best player this season. And this has been the type of coaching that JJ Redick is implementing with this Lakers offense. They're building this offense around Anthony Davis. So far this year, Anthony Davis is averaging just under 31 points per game, 11 and a half rebounds, 2.8 assists. He's shooting 57% from the field, 41% from three. As he's been on fire from three as of late, he's also shooting 78% from the line. He's getting to the free throw line at a career high rate around 11 times a game. He's averaging 1.8 blocks, 1.3 steals. And this is the type of Anthony Davis that we thought we could see if he could stay fully healthy in his career. And right now, knock on wood, he's on pace having a second straight healthy season. And when we see a healthy AD, he looks like a top five player in the NBA. I don't know if you'd call him the MVP right now, but he'd definitely be in top five conversations conversations for what he is doing on the offensive end of the floor and the defensive end of the floor and in my opinion has been the best Lakers so far and here's a surprise one that I just want to talk about Norman Powell has been the best LA Clippers so far it hasn't been James Harden in my opinion Norman Powell I don't know if he's playing with a grudge now that Paul George left them and he can now showcase the Clippers that he could have been a top scoring option for them Kawhi Leonard is still hurt and Norman Powell is averaging 23 points per game three rebounds two assists he's shooting 49 percent from the field 49% from three as well, which is insane on eight attempts a night. He's shooting 82% from the free throw line, and he is just getting to the rim with ease so far this season. I don't know if he's going to average 23 plus points per game on this efficiency throughout the next 70 plus games, but we have seen a decent sample size so far this year with Norman Powell putting up these numbers. He's currently dealing with a hamstring injury. Hopefully he doesn't keep him out for too long because he could really be in most improved player conversations since he averaged 14 points per game as a 30-year-old, and now as a 31-year-old, he is averaging 23 points per game. DeMontis Sabonis has been great for Sacramento. DeMar DeRozan has been great for Sacramento. But we got to talk about De'Aaron Fox for the Kings. He has been unreal as of late. Even though they did lose to Minnesota on Friday night while the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight was going on, De'Aaron Fox put up 60 points on 63% shooting. He's been healthy this year and he's averaging 29 points, five rebounds, and six assists per game. He's shooting 51% from the field, 35% from three, 84% from the line. He's also averaging 1.7 steals per game. He's looked good on both ends of the floor and him as a shot creator this year has been on another level. And De'Aaron Fox is playing like an all NBA caliber player this year, which is going to be huge for him because if he makes an all NBA team this season, he's going to be super max eligible by the Sacramento Kings. So he wants to earn that super max and he's playing out of his mind this year especially where he dropped 60 points that i mentioned and then the very next game he dropped 49 points 109 points in two games is pretty impressive he's currently hurt right now but kevin durant has been the best phoenix son i don't think devin booker has really lived up to devin booker expectations so far this season and kd even though he is out currently with a calf injury was just putting up unreal numbers in year 17 where he was averaging 27 and a half points per game on just kd like efficiency 55 percent from the field 43 percent from three 83% from the line, six and a half rebounds, three and a half assists. He's giving you above average defense as well. And KD was just showcasing why, you know, people talk about LeBron's longevity in this league. Well, they should showcase KD's longevity as well, that he has just been unreal as a scorer, especially with his efficiency, not dropping off whatsoever. And I hope he's back healthy because Kevin Durant was playing like an MVP in year 17. And he has been putting up his normal numbers, but Seth Curry has still been the best Golden State Warrior this season. He's dealt with a few injuries this year, but Curry has still been really solid. He's averaging 23 points, six and a half assists, 5.3 rebounds. He's still shooting an unreal 43% from three on just under 10 three-point attempts a night. He's shooting 48% from the field, 94% from the free throw line. Seth Curry is the all-time leader in free throw percentage, and he's just showcasing why he's just been unreal from the stripe, not just this season, but in his career. He moves so well without the ball in his hands, and I'm going to be an all-star once again this season, and the Warriors have been very good, and then you got to give some love to Buddy Heald as well this season, but I still think Steph has been better. The best Milwaukee Buck, no surprise, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's putting up MVP caliber numbers. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks do not have the team record for Giannis to be in MVP discussions, but if the Bucks go on a winning streak or something, Giannis is going to be right in those talks. He's averaging 31 and a half points, 12 and a half rebounds, six assists per game. That's got to be talked about more. Giannis is putting up video game numbers in year number 12. He's shooting 60% from the field over a block a night as well. He's still an unreal defender and he's the NBA scoring leader right now, 31 and a half points, something he has not done in his career. He's averaging 35 minutes per game and Giannis really can't miss much time this year. He is dealing with a knee injury right now 
but they need him to be fully healthy because this Bucks team has not shown that they are one of the top teams in the NBA, let alone in the Eastern Conference. But Giannis is playing out of his mind and he still deserves to be in top three player in the league talks, in my opinion, is still the second best player in the league. So when I mentioned Norman Powell before, that was probably the most shocking one so far. Everything else has been kind of chalk. This is a shocking one. Benedict Matherin has been the best Indiana Pacer so far. He's been a lot better than Tyrese Halberton and better than Pascal Siakam as well. Now you could also give this to Siakam, but I just think Benedict Matherin has been showcasing more talent for this Pacers, especially on the offensive end of the floor. Their team as a whole has been somewhat disappointing. They've had a lot of center injuries so far. Wiseman out for the year, Isaiah Jackson out for the year. Miles Turner's missed some time. We've had to see Enrique Freeman play in the starting lineup with Pascal Siakam in that front court, but I think Matherin has been the most consistent guy so far. As he's averaging 20 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, he's shooting 53% from the field, 46% from three, and 82% from the line. Not sure if he's going to be in most improved conversations all year long, but he should. His season was cut short last year, so he wasn't able to be a part of that Pacers Conference Championship run, but this year, he is showcasing why he needs to be in their future plans, because Andrew Nemhard and Aaron Smith were having down years before they got injured. Like I mentioned before, Halliburton has not been good whatsoever. Halliburton has been a top three, four-ish player on this team so far this season, which is kind of crazy. I didn't think I was going to talk about Nikola Vucevic in this video, but here I am. I think he's been slightly better than Zach Levine, who's also been good this year. Vucevic is having one of the best years of his career in year number 14. He's 34 years old, and he's putting up 21 points, 10 rebounds, three assists a night, and he's just turning into a Carl Anthony Towns shooting center, basically. 59% from the field, 48% from three on 4.3 attempts a night. He's also shooting 85% from the line. Now, Vujovic is not a good rim protector. He's still not a good defender as a center, but offensively, you gotta be thrilled with this if you're a Bulls fan, at least watching him every single night. Because last year, he took about the same amount of threes and he shot 29% from three. He's shooting 19% better from downtown that is just insane. Got to talk about Kay Cunningham for the Detroit Pistons. He is proving why he should have been the number one overall pick in that 2021 NBA draft. The Pistons as a whole look a lot better this year under J.B. Bickerstaff in the post Monty Williams era. Him and Jaden Ivey have been very fun to watch in their backcourt. And Cade this year is averaging 23 points. He's shooting 45% from the field, 37% from three on six attempts a night. He's a good free throw shooter. He's averaging 8.8 .8 assists per game as well, which is a career high, 7.3 rebounds. 23, 8, and 7 as your slash line for Kate Cunningham. That is really good. He does need to cut down on the turnovers a little bit, averaging four and a half a night. He makes some boneheaded passes sometimes. And if you can cut those down, he could be in best point guard in the East talks sooner than we think. Shout out to the Cavs starting off 15 and 0. They did lose their first game to the Boston Celtics, but Donovan Mitchell has been their best player this year, even though Jared Allen has been great. Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, and that whole bench. Mitchell was averaging 25 points, four and a half rebounds, and four assists per game. He's shooting 47% from the field, 41% from three, and 84% from the line. Going up against Boston, a great defensive team. He dropped 35 points, eight rebounds, and three assists, and shot 45% from the field, even though his three-point shot wasn't falling. I feel like Donovan Mitchell also hasn't really been going 100% to his caliber just because the team has been so good. They've either had big fourth quarter leads, or he can let Darius Garland cook, or find the mismatches with Mobley and Jared Allen inside, but when Donovan Mitchell wants to be one of the best players in the league, he can, and he has been the best player on the best team record-wise this year. And before we get back into the video, I want to give a word from today's sponsor, Underdog. You guys definitely know Underdog by now if you've been watching my content over the last year. Underdog has been a great partner of the channel. I'm glad to be working with them throughout this NBA season, and they're by far the best way to play fantasy sports. I absolutely love using their pick and feature. I use it all NFL season up to the NBA season. I've been using it all NBA season long. They also have it in every other sport sport, college sports as well, and you basically pick higher or lower in certain player statistics, and you can make up to 100 times your money in a single night. I love the way their app used. They're great with their community, and like I said before, they're just the best way to play fantasy sports, and they are offering you a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. So you put in 100 bucks, you're going to get $50 in free play. If you use my code SROS, S-R-O-S, link is in the description to get that 50% deposit match up to $1,000. Like always, please remember to play responsibly, and thank you again to Underdog for sponsoring today's video. Going over to one of the worst teams in the league this year, the Utah Jazz. I'm actually not going to talk about Lowry Markkinen, who has been all right this year, but not to Lowry Markkinen's standards. I'm going to talk about John Collins, who has been great for the Jazz. Collins started some games, but he's coming off the bench for more games, and he has been one of the best bench players in the league. He's averaging 17 and a half points up from his 15 last year. It'd be a career high in Utah, and the most points he has scored in a season since the 2020 year with the Atlanta Hawks, where it was the best year of his career. He's also averaging eight rebounds, 
two and a half assists, shooting 53% from the field, 37% from three, which is very encouraging because this is back-to-back -back years so far in Utah where John Collins has been a good three-point shooter. He's also just shooting 97% from the line, which is unreal as he's been around 80% for most of his career, but he's doing this on his most three-point attempts since the 2022 season. So shout out to John Collins there. And he's been the most consistent Utah Jazz. I don't know if he's going to be on the Jazz after the trade deadline, but Collins has definitely been the best player in Utah throughout the 2025 season. I know he's only played six games, but I'm saying that Shaden Sharp has been the best Portland Trailblazer so far. I'm not talking about Jeremy Grant. I'm not talking about DeAndre Aiden. It sadly hasn't been Scoot Henderson. So I'm going to talk about Shaden Sharp, who has been very good over his last three games. Now that he's getting into the full swing of things, over those last three games, he's averaging 27 points, three and a half rebounds, three assists, 50% from the field, 39% from three. And he just looks like he's way more comfortable in this offense. He's showcasing his athleticism that we saw early in his career. Easy one for Denver here. It's probably the MVP favorite, and it is Nikola Jokic. I mentioned before how Giannis is putting up video game numbers. Well, so is Jokic to probably another level. This year, Jokic is averaging 29.7 points per game, which would be a career high for the Joker. He's also averaging a league high 13.7 rebounds and a league high 11.7 assists. He's averaging more assists per game than Lamelo Ball, than John Morant, than Trey Young, than Chris Paul, than LeBron James, some of the best facilitators in this league. No, it's been Nikola Jokic, who is a center for this team. He's also shooting a career high in three point percentage, 56% from three on about four attempts a night, which is a career high for him as well. He's averaging career highs across the board this season, which means he's got a default win MVP because this would be the best year of his career and he's already got three MVPs. He's on his way to getting his fourth this year. The OKC Thunder, it's interesting because I want to give some love to Jalen Williams, but it's still been Shea Gilgis Alexander as their best player this year. But if you take into account what J-Dub is doing defensively now as their small ball center with every center on that team hurt, you could definitely mention him. But for Shea, he's averaging 29 points, five rebounds, six and a half assists per game. He's shooting 51% from the field, 35% from three, and 88% from the line. He got off to somewhat of a slow start, but he's been very good as of late. He's also a plus defender as well, but if you think it's been J-Dub Thunder fans, let me know in the comments. For Minnesota, it's been Anthony Edwards, who's having his best year of his career now that Carl Anthony Towns is in New York. So far, the Ant-Man is averaging 28 points, five rebounds, and four assists. He's shooting 48% from the field and 42% from three. It is interesting to see his assist drop this year as he averaged 5.1 assists last year, 3.8 assists this year, but he's asked to do a lot more with the ball in his hands. Julius Randle has been a fine number two, but it's not what Carl Anthony Towns has been to Anthony Edwards over the last two years. Dante DiVincenzo has been struggling. We know about Jaden McDaniels and Rudy Gobert's offensive limitations. So Anthony Edwards has been just an unreal three-point shooter this year. His career high in three-point attempts per game was eight and a half in his sophomore year. This year, he's shooting 11 and a half at a career high three point percentage at 42%, which is allowing Anthony Edwards to average a career high in points, 28 points per game as well. He's definitely on his way to being an all-star this year. For the Charlotte Hornets, it may be their only good player. No, I'm not going to disrespect Trey Mann like that, but Brandon Miller has been struggling. Miles Bridges has been struggling. Their centers have been hurt, but LaMelo Ball has been on another planet this year, and he's pretty much single-handedly keeping this Hornets team in every single game. 28 points per game for LaMelo Ball, five rebounds, six and a half assists, shooting 42% from the field, 36% from three, 88% from the line. You'd like for him to be a little bit more efficient, but he's just being asked to do so much. A career high in field goal attempts. He's also shooting 12 and a half threes per game as well. And he's just knocking down these insane looking threes as well. Career high in turnovers, but it's also a career high in usage for LaMelo. He's also leading the league in usage percentage. So yeah, the Hornets are relying a ton on LaMelo Ball. He's going to be an all-star this year. And it's really cool to see some of the top players from the 2020 draft balling out this year again, like Anthony Edwards and LaMelo Ball. Maxi was good, but he's now hurt. Halliburton's been disappointing. So every time we do a 2020 redraft, I feel like it's been changing every year outside of the number one pick because that's been Anthony Edwards for a little bit now. You know what? For the Atlanta Hawks, this one is kind of tough. I was actually going to go with Trey Young, but I'm going to pivot to Jalen Johnson. Now, Trey Young has to do a ton, but his field goal percentage, 38%, has not been where you'd want it to be. He's averaging a lot of turnovers, but obviously he's doing so much with the ball in his hands and he's making his teammates better. So I'm going to go with Jalen Johnson because I also like what I've seen from Jalen Johnson on the defensive side of the floor as well. Hawks fans, you can let me know in the comments, am I disrespecting Trey? Because Jalen Johnson this year has been averaging 19 points, 10 rebounds, and five and a half assists. He's shooting 48% from the field, 31% from three. And he got off to a slow start as well, but he's been very good as of late over the last two weeks. And what I've seen from Johnson on both ends of the floor, I'm going to give him the honors 
over Trey. For the Miami Heat, a little bit of a shocker. It's definitely been Tower Hero. It's definitely not been Bam Adebayo. It's not Jimmy Butler. Tower Hero has been unreal offensively for the Miami Heat this season, and it's been keeping kind of their season hopes alive. 24 points per game, five rebounds, five assists, 48% from the field, 45% from three on a career high 9.7 three point attempts. Great free throw shooter as well, 88% from the line. He doesn't turn the ball over a ton, and he's just been a lights out shooter for them this year. The vibes seem high with Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler together. I know a lot of Heat fans thought their season was over after that second quarter against the Sixers, and then they turned it up a notch in the second half, and now they feel like the vibes have never been higher in South Beach. The Wizards, you could talk about Jordan Poole because he's probably been their best player offensively, but if you're taking into account defense as well, I'm going to talk about Bilal Kula Bali. Bilal this year is breaking out out in year number two he's averaging 15 points per game which is up from what he averaged last year at eight and a half per night he's shooting 55 percent from the field which is a 12 percent increase from last year 37 percent from three 75 percent from the line six rebounds two and a half assists 1.3 steals as a 20 year old which may be not a good look for kyle kuzma and like i said i think jordan Poole has been the best wizard offensively but when you take into account defense i like what Bilal has done on that end of the floor a little bit more than what i like from jordan Poole offensively now we go to orlando if I made this video after the first five games. It would have been Paolo Bancaro, but then he unfortunately got hurt. So it's definitely been Franz Wagner since he has been healthy this year. And he got off to a little bit of a rough start as the number one option when Paolo went down, but he's been unreal as of late. Over Franz's last seven games where the Orlando Magic are six and one, he's been averaging 29 points per game, over six assists, over six rebounds, over a steal a night, shooting 47% from the field and 36% from three on seven and a half attempts, which is a great sign for Franz because his shot was the big thing everybody was talking about about last year he's shooting 86 percent from the free throw line on over six attempts a game and Franz has looked good on the defensive end of the floor and he is carrying this Orlando Magic team as the number one option because they've struggled to find a secondary shot creator when Pablo went down and now Franz is the number one and he's been carrying this Orlando Magic team with big wins point differential wise over the Pelicans Wizards Hornets but then also some nice wins against the Pacers Sixers and Suns the Houston Rockets was definitely one of the tougher ones to do I'm going to talk about Alper and Shangun but I also wanted to talk about Tar Eason for what he's doing defensively I think Dylan Brooks has also been unreal on that side of the floor same with the men Thompson the Rockets have been great defensively but their offensive guys like Shangun, Jalen Green and Fred Van Vliet have struggled to live up to previous expectations especially Jabari Smith Jr. as well but I think Shangun has been better as of late after a rocky start Shangun is now averaging 17 and a half points 11 rebounds and five assists this year he's shooting 47 percent from the field he's struggling from three though 28 percent from downtown but he's been better as a free throw shooter this year and I still think has been a good offensive hub for the Houston Rockets. Like I said, it probably hasn't been the consistency that you would like to see from Shangun after getting this big contract. So he's been better offensively, but Tari Eason has been unreal defensively. And I think deserves to be in the conversations for all defensive first team honors right now. All right, this is going to be an interesting one. Mavericks fans, you got to let me know who's been your best player this year. Has it still been Luka Doncic, who I think has been disappointing to Luka Doncic's expectations, or is it Kyrie Irving? I'm going to talk about Kyrie. Kyrie's just been way more consistent offensively this year, and I don't think Luka has been better or even the same defensively as Kyrie. Kyrie's not a good defender, but I don't think Luka has been good whatsoever defensively, and Luka is obviously a great offensive hub. He's getting his teammates involved, and he still had Luka caliber games, but Kyrie, I think, has just been more consistent this year for the Mavericks. 24 points, four and a half rebounds, five assists, but he's shooting 54% from the field to Luka's 43%. He's shooting 53% from three on Luka's 32%, and he's shooting 86% from the line on Luka Doncic's 78%. You know, in year number 14, as a 32, almost 33-year-old, you may think Kyrie could lose a step, but it hasn't looked like that whatsoever this year. For the San Antonio Spurs, it's an easy one. It's Victor Wimbanyama. And Wemby did get off to a slow start this year because his threes weren't falling, but as of late, they've definitely been falling, including a 50-point game against the Washington Wizards where he went 8 of 16 from downtown. And his numbers this year are 23 points, 10 and a half rebounds, 2.8 assists. He is leading the league in blocks once again, 3.7 a night. 1.3 steals. He's on his way to getting his first Defensive Player of the Year award. He's now shooting 34% from three on eight and a half attempts a night. He's been much better as a free throw shooter. And I think his playmaking is getting a little bit better. He does need to cut down on the turnovers once again. But either way, Wemby's obviously been the best spur this season. A little bit of a shocker in Memphis. I'm going with Jaron Jackson Jr. over John Morant. Now, Jaw's been banged up this year with a hip injury and Jaron Jackson Jr. has been a little bit more healthy. So far this year, Triple J has been the best he's been offensively, in my opinion. 
23 points on 52% shooting. He averaged 22 and a half points last year, but he shot just 44% from the field. He's shooting much better from three, 35% from three. He's averaging 5.8 rebounds, which is always going to be funny for somebody that is six foot 10, 1.4 steals, 1.7 blocks. Now it doesn't look like how he was elite defensively in 2023 when he went deep point, but he's still a very good defender in this league. So you're getting very good two-way play out of Jaron Jackson Jr., who in my opinion has been the most consistent and the best Grizzlies so far. And for the New Orleans Pelicans, it's been like their only healthy player and it's actually funny he's out against the Cavs as well and I mean it's not funny but the Pelicans have lost basically their top seven guys this year at a single point and Ingram has been their best player 23 points six rebounds five assists 46% from the field 37% from three 86% from the line and he's been asked to do so much with DeJounte Murray Hurt, CJ McCollum, Jordan Hawkins, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy at times, Zion Williamson at times as well. Zion got up to a slow start, ended up being a little bit better as of late, but then he got hurt again. So it's going to be Brandon Ingram by default, who's actually been very good this year though. Maybe a slight shocker in New York, but for the Knicks, it hasn't been Jalen Brunson, who has been very good as of late. And you could go with Jalen Brunson as the best Nick, but I'm going to talk about Carl Anthony Towns, their big acquisition from last offseason. So far this year, Carl Anthony Towns has been unreal offensively for the Knicks, 26 points, 12 rebounds three assists shooting 54 percent from the field but he's also shooting 51 percent from three the pick and roll the pick and pop with Jalen Brunson looks unstoppable right now now you would like for Cat to be a little bit better defensively but I do think he does get a bad rap I don't think he's been a great defender but he hasn't been a bad defender if you want to talk about great two-way play for the Knicks this year definitely got to talk about OG and Anobi but I think overall Cat has been the best Nick no matter who we talk about for the Brooklyn Nets they may end up getting traded this year it looks like they're going to do a fire sale but I do think Cam Thomas has been their best player slightly better than Dennis Schroeder and Cam Johnson. Cam Thomas has been one of the best pure scorers in the league this year. 25 points. He is 14th in the NBA in scoring, but he hasn't really been much outside of that. He is 81st in the NBA with 3.1 assists per night, which is kind of funny given his usage and the amount of time the ball is in his hands, but he's shooting 46% from the field and 39% from three. And like I said, he has been one of the best scorers in the league this season. He's kept the Nets very competitive, but so have their veterans, like I mentioned before, in Cam Johnson and Dennis Schroeder. And it's funny, all three of those players may be off the Brooklyn Nets in February. So far this year, Jason Tatum has been the best Boston Celtic. No surprise, but he wasn't the finals MVP from when they won it all against the Mavericks last year. But Jason Tatum definitely deserves to be in MVP conversations. I do think Nicole Jokic is number one, but after him, you could talk about Jason Tatum being number two, who's averaging 29.9 points per game, over eight rebounds, just under six assists a night, which would be a career high. He's been great defensively, in my opinion, so switchable and can guard multiple positions. He's shooting 46% from the field, 39% from three on 11 attempts a game. And he showed out against the best team in the league this year against the Cavs, giving them their first loss where he dropped 33 points, 12 rebounds, seven assists, and shot 50% from the field and 60% from three. You were getting elite two-way play out of Jason Tatum this year. The next player is one of the more surprising ones in this video, just because they have three all-stars on their team, but they've all been banged up or underperforming. And that's Jared McCain of the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, it's not Maxi, it's definitely not Embiid, and it's definitely not Paul George. Now you couldn't talk about Tyrese Maxi because he was keeping them in games when everybody was hurt, but Jared McCain has been keeping them in games on better efficiency than what Maxi was doing. And Jared McCain has been unreal over his last couple of games where he had a 27 point performance against the Hornets, 23 points against the Knicks, 34 points on 46% shooting from three against the Cavs, kept them in that game when everybody was hurt. 29 points against the Magic, 20 points against the Heat. He's actually been unreal and super consistent for Philadelphia now that he's playing more with all these injuries. And now Philadelphia has hit rock bottom this season after their bad loss against the Heat when everybody was healthy besides Tyrese Maxey. There was the team meeting. Maxey called out Embiid. But a blessing in disguise in all this has been Jared McCain playing like the best 76er this year which is kind of insane to say. Also another shocking one for the last one we're going to talk about it, and it's Yaka Pertle of the Toronto Raptors. Now you could give some love to RJ Barrett and Grady Dick this season. Their role players have been exceeding expectations, but Yaka Pertle has been a top five center in the Eastern Conference. Who would have thought that Nikola Vucevic and Yaka Pertle were going to be better than Bam Adebayo and Joel Embiid this year? Pertle is averaging 17 points, 12 rebounds, and three assists per game. He's shooting 61% from the field, averaging over a steal and block a night, has looked the best he has defensively, and offensively and he just had a 35 point 12 rebound performance in an overtime loss against the Boston Celtics and then dropped 30 and 15 against the Indiana Pacers who were down a couple big men and I don't know if he's going to get traded at the deadline because the Raptors have not been good this year but either way Jakob Pertl has been the best Raptor from the start of the season to current day and that is going to be it for me I hope you guys did enjoy let me know if you did by dropping a thumbs up also let me know down below did I get your favorite team right or wrong please let me know subscribe for more videos like this and I'll catch you guys in the next one peace